Our reading this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 4, starting at verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick, and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognized them as companions of Jesus. When they saw the man who had been cured standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. I love how restrained the NRSV is in translating this passage. Peter and John are uneducated and ordinary. Uh, the Greek words here are actually a little bit different. Uh, they are ah grammatoi and idiotai. Ah is a prefix that negates or cancels the word that follows. The root word grama refers to words or writing. They are literally wordless or illiterate. The other word is actually where we get the modern English word idiot. The rulers and elders hear them speak and they look at each other and say, aren't these those illiterate idiots? <laughs> I take a lot of comfort in this story. There's always more we don't know, things we don't understand, things we can't do. But people aren't seeing God at work. They don't come to Christ because of how great we are. It's God's power that's at work. It is the spirit that speaks. God's miraculous power declares itself. As Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We all bring gifts and skills to the table, and God wants to make use of those, but at the end of the day, they're not the thing that actually matters. God is pouring out light and life into these vessels of clay, imperfect containers bearing infinite brilliance. God is making it happen. God is making himself known to the world. We aren't asked to generate content. It's not about the most eloquent speech or the grandest act. It's not even about getting the most likes or the smoothest tech. We are only called to be faithful messengers, to carry the gospel into all the world. And God's power is sufficient for everything else.